So we're going to worship this morning. We can't wait to worship with you. So stand up, join with our motions, and sing along with us this morning. I don't know where you lay your head or where you call your home. I don't know where you eat your meals or where you talk on the phone. I don't know if you gotta cook a butler or a maid. I don't know if you got a yard with a hammock in the shade. But come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. It's a big, big yard where we can play football. Touchdown, big, big house. It's my father's house. I don't know if you got some shelter, say a place to hide. I don't know if you live with friends in whom you can confide. I don't know if you got a family, say a mom or dad. I don't know if you feel love at all, but I bet you wish you had. So come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house. With lots and lots of room A big, big table With lots and lots of food A big, big yard Where we can play football Touchdown It's a big, big house It's my father's house Sing that again with us Come and go So come and go with me to my father's house come and go with me to my father's house it's a big big house with lots and lots of room a big big table with lots and lots of food a big big yard where we can play football a big big house so come and go with me to my father's house come and go with me to my father's house it's a big big house with lots and lots of room a big big table with lots and lots of food a big big yard where we can play football touchdown big big house it's my father's house. Hey, welcome. We're happy that you're here with us. My name is Jack Arellano. I'm the community pastor here, and I get to teach you this morning. All right, so one of the things that we're going to talk about today is about feet. Ew, we're in the series or in the topic called Ew, the theme of Ew, gross. So today when you leave church, I want you to do something for me. I want you to get in your car, I want you to buckle your seatbelt, and then I want you to look down. Well, we all spend a great deal in our cars, and our cars take a terrible toll for all the travel that we do in it. A car well used and well traveled, especially by a family with small children, uh, will be loaded with trash. <laughs> We will find empty cups, fast food bags, papers, crayons, pencils, markers, books. And not just trash either. We're going to find uh, french fries wedged between the seats, drink spills on our seats, and worst of all, the stains from where someone got car sick and barfed. Have I hit too close <laughs> to home there? Well, adult leaders, uh, anyone have barf stains in their car? Uh, don't get upset for me asking. Remember, our theme right now is ew. 
In biblical times, though, there were no cars. People didn't have to worry about crayons melting into the back seat fabric, orange drink stains on the floor, french fries rotting between the seats, and of course, there was no barf stains on doors. People who had the means to travel it was usually by donkey or cart. But most people walked. They walked to the corner store and they walked to the town down the street. Not wearing any sneakers or boots. We didn't have hiking boots back then. Usually it was by open toe sandals. No matter how far or how short the journey was, their feet got dirty. In fact, I would dare to say people who traveled a lot like Jesus and his disciples, they had the dirtiest feet of them all, probably dirtier than our cars. Now with all these dirty feet moving about, there was a great need for a lot of foot washing. Uh, it was customary back in those days uh, that people would ha that had money, they would have a servant or a person that served people by washing their feet when they were coming into people's homes. Now this servant or this person that would be serving you in this way would not be your spectacular servant. And it would probably be the lowest of rank uh, of the servants. So understanding now that, I want us to look at a Bible story um, that I'm sure you've heard uh, many times before. And it's Jesus and his disciples, they're sitting uh, at somebody's house and they're having dinner. Their feet are probably filthy. You know, they walked a lot of miles spreading the good news of the gospel. So who do you think gets up to wash their feet while everyone is at the table? Yeah, it was Jesus. So I want us to turn to John in your Bibles, use your Bibles, to John chapter 13, 1 through 17. All right, we're going to read this story. It says, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the betrayer of Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table, took off his uh, outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them in the with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, said Peter, not just my feet, but wash my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew he was going to be betrayed and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. 
Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus was the undisputed leader. His disciples even called him master. Some even believed he was the Messiah that had been prophesied in the Old Testament. If he was truly God, and he was, Jesus was the last person who should have been on his knees, wetting a rag and cleaning the dirt and grime from everyone's feet. But Jesus did that. He got a bowl and rag, he got the towel, he washed the feet of the men who later that night would run away and hide after he was arrested. If Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, we should do the same. We know that Jesus did what Jesus did for us, right? He left his throne in heaven, he died for our sins, and Jesus wants us to show his love to others by serving. He wants us to give ourselves any chance we get to people uh, we know for that's how they will know that we are followers of Jesus Christ because of our love and our kindness. Now, the next time, my friends, that your friends come over to your house, please do me a favor. Do not wash their feet. <laughs> Washing the feet of our guests is a custom that thankfully has been long gone and we don't do that anymore. They can wash their own feet later when they get home and hopefully they'll put their own socks in the laundry to be washed as well. But I want us all to be looking for ways we can serve our friends and our families this week. And you know where we can start? You got it, in the back seat of mom and dad's car. After you sur survey the damage that you've done through the past uh, car trips, look for a bag and start filling it with the garbage. Uh, dump those old papers, the french fries, the crayons, the junk, all in that bag. And when you get home, you go throw that bag away in the garbage. Then see if mom and dad will let you finish cleaning the car. That would be a great way to serve mom and dad. Look for other ways to help around the house as well. Ask if there's something mom has wanted to clean for a while and just hasn't had the time. Or head to your room and clean that up. Look for opportunities to help everywhere this week. Maybe you can set up cones at practice and pick them up after. Maybe you can do something nice for a friend uh, who is having a bad day. Uh, maybe you can help a teacher in a, or a lunchroom worker. Maybe you can be a friend to the new kid. We don't wash feet anymore, and we can all be thankful for that. But there are still many ways that we can serve one another. We can follow the example of Jesus. All right? So let's serve others let's do so with a glad heart and let's ask god to make our service our witness so people can know the love of jesus through the actions we take all right friends let's pray dear jesus thank you for the example jesus set for us and we thank you in jesus name for this day amen <music>